Today we have a fun project for you. We're going to be going ahead and taking this practice guitar and we're going to glitter it and we're going to be doing a, an epoxy flood coat over it. Now uh, epoxy flood coats can be challenging when you're doing something in 360 degrees, right? Epoxy usually comes over the top, goes down the side, and then, you know, beads along the bottom. Well, when you have <laughs> this nice edge right here, and the whole back that's supposed to be epoxy too, that's when you run into some challenges. So that's what this video is about. It's going to show you how um, you can pull off a, a pretty nice epoxy flood coat. So we're going to go ahead and uh, first step one, take the guitar apart. You want to isolate the uh, unit that's being glittered as much as you possibly can. Uh, and then step two, clean it really well. And then step three, plan the glitter. Okay, so here we go. Hey, so we are ready to start the red guitar. Um, as you can see, it is propped up high on the table. I'm going to explain why in a second. You probably see, uh, do you see the T pins sticking out here? Uh, the green tape. Okay, so let me explain what all this is about. One, the green tape is acting as barriers so that the um, flood coat epoxy won't drop onto the neck area, won't drop into the area um, where the electronics are here, and all the T-pins are representing the holes that were in the guitar for where, you know, plates were screwed in and so forth. Um, you know, it's very easy for the epoxy to not only go into it, which it still will, even with the pins, but at least we know the locations of all these holes. So, um, as it's drying, I'll, I'll manipulate the pins around to keep those holes open. Um, this, epoxy will go into them, but at least that way you can re-drill and re-screw into those holes in the exact location that they were before. Okay, um, If you want to uh, get um, plugs that are the size of those holes and not go through that process, feel free. It's difficult. Um, you could also put a little bit of tape over it. Um, but then, you know, the tape gets epoxy on top and then you're digging out the tape. So I use pins. Okay. Um, let me tilt this down a little bit. I don't want to do it a lot because I don't want my pins dropping, but I want you to be able to see what the top looks like. Okay. All the holes are filled with either tape or pins. Okay. Why is it so high off the table? Normally when you see me do floods or other people do floods, you know, you only put a little bit of space between you and the table. Well. This is a 360 degree pour, okay? Uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and pour it. It's going to drop over the edge. And then what happens? Normally you get those ugly drips, right? In this case, no. You're going to take a brush and for the next, oh, I don't know, 30, 40, whatever it takes. It depends on your temperature, your humidity, and all the rest. You're going to be brushing that drip edge onto the surface as cleanly as you possibly can, as cleanly and as perfectly as you can onto the back edge. Then you're going to let it dry. So you're going to constantly be brushing. You're not going to wait a half hour and then come and brush it. No, you're going to be brushing it, sort of like stirring tapioca pudding, continually going. <laughs> so settle in for the long haul if you want to do a guitar. Brush, brush, brush. Each time a drip forms, brush it, brush it, brush it. You know, wait 10 minutes, wait five minutes, come back, brush it again. Get it as smooth as you can. When the epoxy's dry, you can stop brushing. Not dry, dry, but you know, not dripping anymore. You can stop brushing. Then you're gonna let it sit. Next day come and you flip the guitar over. And then you do a flood on the other side, but it's a controlled flood. You are not flooding like you normally would and letting it drip over the edge. You're flooding to the edge. You're gonna be doing a very careful brush work on that second side where you're taking it just to the edge and letting it stop. Now the beauty of this particular brand, which is the Envirotech Light, is it's thick. It doesn't just go, oh, you have to encourage it to go, okay? So you can actually take this and in the right temperature, if you have the temperature in your room just right, it'll take it and it'll just go to the edge and it will stop. It's a beautiful thing. And that's what you have to do with a guitar. Whenever you're doing anything that's a 360 pour, you have to be able to have that kind of control. Okay, so let me just take you through what I've done here. Clean the surface with rubbing alcohol. Uh, I'm going to be mixing up uh, a normal batch using the instructions of the manufacturer. I'm adding in our metallic red dragon in two flake sizes. 
ultra fine and chunky. I'm doing that because it's a rock and roll guitar, right? And if you have two different flake sizes, it's going to bounce more light than if you just have one. It's also a cooler look. Um, I have two brushes, throwaway brushes, but decent throwaway brushes. These aren't the kind that are going to shed all over the place. Well, technically they're not. I always pull. Whenever I'm using these crummy brushes, I always pull really hard. And I kind of abuse them a little bit to see like what's going to come out. Uh, you can also take scissors and trim if you, if you need to, if you feel like there's some wild hairs in there. These are looking good. We already did the tape work, but uh, you can use the blue tape, the green tape. Uh, always wear gloves, got my gloves ready. And all the plastic underneath on this table, there's four layers of plastic, so I won't ruin my work table. Um, so here I go. Uh, I'm gonna mix it up and then I'll show you the flood. Got my red dragon, got my epoxy, about ready to mix them together. I always switch cups. The manufacturer recommends you switch cups. I find it to be smart to do that. So I always put my glitter in another cup and then mix my epoxy into it. This is uh, an arbitrary thing. There's no right amount of glitter. Uh, it's a personal choice. In this case, I've got a nice red underneath it. So if this turns into accent coverage, that's totally fine. Um, you'll get used to how it looks in the cup. Uh, the more times you do this, the better. You definitely don't want the epoxy to be lumpy. If it's lumpy, then you've added too much glitter. You want it to pour smoothly. Let's see what it looks like there. Got that. I want it to run like epoxy. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and flood over this. I've made way more than this project needs because I want it to flood. I want it to be smooth as glass. So here we go. Make sure you're pouring over a level surface. Your table should be leveled. Don't assume that it is just because you've been crafting on it for years. You can encourage um, the flood with a brush, which you'll see me do in a minute. Make sure that it covers everything. I always reserve a little bit back so that there's enough for me to take and dip my brush in and do the sides just in case the sides aren't getting enough. I always like to keep and reserve a little bit back. But you can take your brush and sort of encourage it to find level if you need to. Um, I don't know if you've watched other videos of mine, you'll know that if you get a cloudy looking surface, it means the uh, epoxy is too thick. It kind of looks like the Milky Way. If that happens, like there's a little bit of that happening right here. If it doesn't um, level out itself, which it very well might, I will take a brush and make sure that it levels out and that it doesn't stay super thick. Um, this uh, guitar has lots of ins and outs up here. You want to make sure that all the surfaces are coated. I like to work on a workbench where I can walk around my piece so I can see all sides. See, I'm dipping into the cup, working my way around. I'm about ready to come onto your side.
The sides are where you're going to have the most trouble getting it coated with glitter. Um, that's why I always recommend working with a base color that's the same as your glitter. It kind of hides that thinness. It's, it's just gravity. There's not a huge amount you can do with it. You can only flood for so long before it starts to become uneven. So um, it's sort of the nature of the beast. Fortunately, on a guitar, what you're seeing the most is, always, of course, going to be the top. And that's where the glitter is going to be the most. So it's a little too early to start working on the drips underneath. You know, give it a good 10 minutes before you start aggressively working on it. But this is essentially, I'm showing you this action right here. That's essentially what you're doing. You're going to make sure that it's quite smooth. And the reason it's so high up on the table is you want to be able to get down there. and look like this to make sure that it's even. Okay, pretty close. I think we're about ready to pop bubbles here. I usually don't wait too long to start the bubble propping process. So let me fire that up and we'll get going. There's lots of ways to pop bubbles. Um, you can use a propane torch, you can use the heat gun, which is what I do. Uh, you can use a hair dryer and you can blow on it. Um, I use a heat gun just because I'm used to it, um, but uh, a lot of people like to use uh, propane torches. Uh, not as many people blow on it and use hair dryers that I know of anyway. about all you have to do for your first pass. You then let more bubbles come to the surface and you'll do it again and again and again. Uh, don't get too close. If you overheat the material, it will damage it. Uh, while it's this wet, you still have an opportunity to go in and actually move the material. Uh, once it gets into like that 10-15 minute mark, you don't want to do that. Like if you saw that there wasn't enough glitter on the sides, yeah, well, tough luck. Uh, <laughs> you know, you should have should have gotten it when you could. Um, it's one of those things where you cannot uh, go in there right now. Well, right now you probably could, but at about five minutes from now, you wouldn't be able to go in there and uh, move this around very much without uh, having an adverse effect of uh, looking uneven. You know, with guitars, you want it to look absolutely as shiny as you possibly can. Now is the time to start smoothing those drips out underneath. You want to be careful not to affect the sides of the guitar. You're just going for the bottom. And like I said, you're going to be doing this a lot. So just be patient, take your time. Keep it as smooth as you can. You'll be doing it over and over and over. Okay, so this is what the underside looks like. See where I've taken the edges, just smooth them out. There'll be at least one more round of smoothing out to go. You can see there's still a slight edge that's dripping. So I'll be back in about five minutes to do another one, maybe two. God only knows. But anyway, there you go. Hey, so I've decided on the back of the red guitar, we're going to go ahead and do um, some embedding of these transparencies. I print these out on uh, transparencies on uh, laser printers, and then you can glitter them and then embed them in epoxy. And so I'm mixing up some epoxy right now. I'm going to add in some um, City Lights, which is a black holographic glitter. Okay, so I've gone ahead and mixed up my... Um, Gone ahead and mixed up a batch of black holographic. 
and I'm very carefully painting it on and I'm gonna let it dry and then tomorrow when I do the um, epoxy work on the back of the guitar um, I will be embedding this okay so I have the rose uh, that's been glittered it's in black holographic um, I'm working under a fluorescent light right now so you aren't gonna get the beautiful bounce that you normally would but anyway um, it is done it is dry and now it is time to trim it now um, you want to leave uh, very little of the clear exposed on the sides because you actually can if you leave enough of it you actually will see it like if I were to trim like a quarter inch and you had this quarter inch sitting there um, you'd see that but if I cut down to around a sixteenth of an inch or a uh, even right up to it, then you don't. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and trim, leaving about a sixteenth of an inch all around the design. And you say, well, what happens when you get to the open spots? Which I'm about ready to do right now. I'm just going to go in as close as you can. like I did right there again because the open spots are so small your eyes just not really going to be going there it's going to be looking at the overall design not really going to notice those open places okay so there we go so here you've got a spot right here and here, and here, and here, and here, actually not there, sorry, um, that you could potentially see it, but you just really don't. Your eyes won't. It's going to be spending its time looking at the overall uh, design of the whole rose. So the fact that you've got some, you know, plastic right there uh, really shouldn't matter. So it's the next day, and um, the red guitar is really quite beautiful on the front. It's uh, perfectly smooth. There's just no bubbles, no imperfections. Really, really nice. Um, the back side, um, even though, you know, we did, I did the, the check every few minutes, you know, you are going to end up with um, some drips. It's just epoxy. It is what it is. Um, but it wasn't bad. So what I've done is I just lightly sanded right around here, taking it down. Um, and now the trick really is, you know, the reason why this is sort of an intermediate advanced project is because you need to take the um, backside right up to the edge but not let it drop over. So you've got to have really good brushwork skills. So um, what you do is you, you start with a pool and you just work your way out and you want to make sure that the temperature is um, a little bit on the cool side so that it tends to be thicker and, and hold um, and hold the edge better. So I actually have air conditioning on right now and I'm running it uh, a little bit cool. Um, so that's what's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and um, embed this rose which I glittered uh, in the earlier video you saw. So put it down here. So I'm going to be doing two coats, one with the glitter, and then uh, if necessary, I'll do a clear coat over the top. So I'm just going to put the camera down. You can just watch me go through the process. Okay, I'm just doing ultrafine here because I only want ultrafine underneath the rose. I want smaller flakes underneath it. you work on a nice flat table when you're doing this sort of thing uh, you're really relying on it not flooding over the sides if you were to flood over the side then you lose that beautiful uh, edge you do not want that
Okay, so at this point I have put down um, the coat of uh, red glitter. I'm now checking to make sure that the glitter is fairly uniform. Um, you want to make sure that there aren't any dead spots that will stand out. Uh, it can happen when you're spreading it around the way that I have, because um, you're, you're doing a controlled flood. When you're doing a true flood, the glitter tends to just level itself out, but when you're doing a controlled spread where you're spreading it around with a brush, you can, by the nature of dragging, uh, open up spots where there's no glitter. So you definitely want to go back and double check to make sure you know your glitter is uniform throughout. Um, but you don't want to mess with it too much. You know, you got to kind of let epoxy find its level and do its thing. Um, in this case, you are asking it to, to not flood, um, and that's not by nature what it wants to do. So you can hear the air on the background. That's the air conditioner. I am keeping it just not quite at 70 degrees to try and slow it down so that it doesn't want to go over. Uh, it really wants to be 70 degrees. So as soon as I feel like it has set up a certain amount, I'll raise the temperature in the room up enough so that it can do what it needs to do and set properly. But for the sake of spreading, um, I have chilled the room down a little bit. So if you're doing this sort of thing where you want it to not flood uh, over edges and you want to kind of control it more, I recommend working on the cold side of, uh, of its limitations, which is between 70 and 80 degrees, so just a little bit below 70. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop bubbles one more time. Um, also, if you've seen any of my videos on epoxy, you definitely want to check from different angles for open spots. Uh, if you look from just one angle and one side of the table, you can sometimes miss open spots. Now is the time to do it when it's still nice and wet. Okay, it has been a little over five hours and it is time to do the final coat, uh, flood coat. This is going to be the overall evener. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you saw the sanded bumps and so forth, those are a little bit higher because I didn't want to sand them down and take the paint off. Those, so they're just a little bit higher. And the red rose, you know, added an element of height to it. Um, you know, and, and any, you know, a flake that may have been slightly standing up. Uh, we call that standing flake. I, I had just a couple of those. I knocked them down. But if you had a couple that were standing up, then this would be your chance to sort of uh, have that uniform, nice, smooth, perfectly smooth finish uh, using this coat. So this is the great evener. <laughs> I'm going to uh, pour it on just like I did the red, very carefully moving it to the edge and not letting it drop. And uh, if I'm successful, uh, this should be my final coat. I shouldn't need to do anything more to this piece. Mm -hmm.